to take a look at Clue Mysteries. Clue Mysteries is, of course, a spin-off of Clue, or Cluedo, for you people uh, of European descent. Or who live in there? I don't know. Whatever. So anyway, we're going to take a look here. It's a pretty nice uh, little box, actually. This game came out... I don't know. What this game came out? This game came out in 2005. You hear this? 2005. Uh, kind of looks like a leather, leatherette, faux leatherette cover there. It's got some nice sort of Art Deco uh, artwork on the front here. On the back, it gives you a pretty good view of what you'll be buying. This game is um, relatively simple, but then again, as a clue, it's relatively simple. No artwork on the inside of the box. That's not a super plus for me. I love artwork on the inside of the box. Inside here, though, they did go through the trouble of putting the suspects, and it gives you a backstory as well as age of a bunch of clue characters, including some new clue characters that were created, if I'm not mistaken, for this game, and then for Clue FX, and then some other games like Clue Suspects, where they kind of needed more than just the typical suspects. Uh, you've got not only your regular characters, but you've got people like uh, Lady Sue, uh, whatever, Lady Lavender, <laughs> you've got, oh yeah, you know him, you know him, Rusty Nailer, huh, that's kind of suspicious. Uh, you also have uh, Prince Azure down here, and then uh, Miss Jane Meadowbrook, look, she's got a hyphenated last name, she's pushing, I can tell you that right now, uh, Lord Alfred Gray. Like, where the heck did he come from? And then uh, Miss Peach. Mm -hmm. And there's also, of course, Mr. Body in this game. And there's an Inspector Brown. So let's take a look. In the newer traditions of little tiny boards, which I'm not really keen on. It comes with one of these little tiny fold-out boards. I'm kind of a junkie for old boards. The bigger, the better, in my opinion. But it's actually a very, sorry for the glare there, it's very nicely drawn, you know, some board games are very bland. This is actually has quite the nice uh, artistic touches on it. We've got these nifty little cardboard clue books, detective notebook. Basically, it's got a slot for your notes. It's got all the um, suspects listed conveniently. Nice. You got these infuriating cards that let you do things like let people reveal clues to one another or take turns, lose turns, etc., etc. And then you have your people's quote unquote houses. Apparently, Professor Plum has a purple castle. I don't know what that's about. That's suspicious. But nevertheless, um, there's a bunch of these. Each of the characters has their own little house or location. And then it actually has a spinning wheel, and it's got secretly hidden clues. And you reveal those with a little spyglass. And then on the front, it's got a little dial where you put the uh, appropriate clue, depending on uh, what you're, which mission you're playing or what, whatever you want to call them. I'll call them mission. We've got this beautiful mirror. Let's see if we can see the camera in the mirror. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. All it is is a sticker. Uh, this actually lets you read one of the clues, the one actually from Inspector Brown. You place it to the reverse. You can actually read what the clue says in the proper order. And we also have, for the regular houses, we've got the nifty little red magnifying glass, which has probably been in certain board games for probably like 30 years or so. I remember these from quite different number of board games. You look through the clue, and you can actually... And actually read it. And then, of course, there's the Tudor Mansion, which is Mr. Body, who apparently is still alive after all these years and being murdered so many times. And uh, he likes enormous pocket watches, apparently. And his deal is, on the back of his, it looks like a bunch of jumbled letters. There's a little special key. You place the key over the letters, and it'll actually give you the location of the crime. Big giant instructions in notebook because your actual missions or whatever case cases are in here mysteries if you will 
And I think there are. Let's see how many there are. Like a hundred. Oh, hell. Oh, excuse me. There's fifty. <laughs> There's up to fifty different mysteries, which is which is fine. We got location tokens, which are the locations where you might find out that the crime took place, which you move about the board. And then you have your typical character tokens, which look just like the old classic pieces. And then you got the stands for the location. So um, let's set the board up and take a look at this game. As you can see here on the map, excuse me, on the board, we have different locations where the different characters live. And on the board, you put the little corresponding stand-up with the clues in it. And uh, you've also got your little mystery-solving devices, your cards, and then the location tokens, which start out at the corners. Each player, it's a fairly simple game, rolls a dice, moves a number of spaces. If they land on a space and want to check out what that clue is, they'll take the corresponding person, and they'll actually look at the clue, and then they'll take their uh, whoops, detective's notebook and they'll write down the clue and of course once most clues are done you should have a pretty good idea of who did it. Now you want to know who did it and why they did it and what was done. This is not your typical clue somebody killed somebody. These are actually uh, quite a bit more tamer storylines. Basically, you're going to go into your back of your manual, pick a mystery, and you'll go ahead and do it. It's got a short synopsis, tells you all the locations of where to set the clues on the little houses, and then uh, whenever you're ready to find out who did it, if somebody is ready to go for it, it tells you where to turn the back of the book, which is upside down, and it gives you the actual um, solution to the mystery. So basically, you move around, you also can move the tokens, you block your opponent, you try to get as many of the different clues as possible. You also, once you have the clues from the people, there's the two locations that tell you where it was done at, and it tells you also, uh, this one tells you where it was done, and this one right here tells you if one of the other characters was lying, which is extremely fun. It throws a, a monkey wrench into the works, because something you might have deducted from somebody's testimony might be totally wrong because they were lying. This game is really simple and to hardcore gamers is probably not that fun. I consider myself a different type of hardcore gamer. I like games, period. And as long as it's not horribly boring, I enjoy it. This one can be played by just about anybody. It's very simple and um, I really enjoy it. Basically that's it for Clue Mysteries. Um, out of five stars, I'll give it about two and a half, three. Now don't get me wrong, if it's a game I don't like, it's going to have one star. If I like it and I want to play it, it's got two or higher. The most magnificent game I've never run across, but fantastic games are going to be at four. So you're going to have two, three, or four. I'm going to like them. And of course, five is the, um, I don't know, legendary game that I haven't run across yet. But there's a couple of games that we'll show you that are just are at four and they're bordering on fire. They're pretty good. So don't get me too wrong when I say this is a 2, because 2 is still good. If I say it's 1, it's a bad. Is that bad? That must show you that I like games, because I'm hardly going to give any game a bad score. <laughs> anyway, so there you go.